now that I've decided to do this, I have to figure out how I'm going to do it. I know other creators and crafty people on YouTube usually post a whole video that is the entire project, or maybe they break it down into a couple parts, and that's wonderful and great. They have an established rate of work. I used to, at least in, in bursts, that would have me up until 4 o'clock in the morning, feverishly finishing things. But I have kind of sacrificed it to the floor, unfortunately. In fact, uh, I'm just about to finish something <laughs> that I started five years ago. So I don't know yet how I'm going to do this, but I figure the only way out is through. And the best course of action is to just start doing things and uh, figure out exactly how I'm going to do the process later instead of worrying about it before it's actually come to pass. And given my rate of work, it means that I have a significant number of projects that are partially started, halfway done, or nearly finished. These are all largely experiments. So I figured I would just pick one that seemed simple enough. And uh, what I decided to do is uh, my best friend and I went to uh, back when she, before she moved away, we went to the local mall and there was a shop there that had these uh, cheap Venetian masks. They weren't, they're plastic, not paper mache or there weren't any feathers or anything. But I am a huge fan of masks, <laughs> which is funny given the current standing of things. Uh, but yes, I love masks. Uh, I would like to get one of the fancy expensive kinds one day, but maybe I'll just make my own. Anyway, I had this mask and it wasn't anything too special. I mean, it was special, I bought it with a friend, but in terms of craftsmanship, I mean, it's pretty sturdy, but the paint job uh, decidedly not careful, as most things are. I only paid, I think, 12 or $13 for it, so actually the quality of the mask itself is fairly good. Um, I had entertained an idea at some point of being Ultros for Halloween or to Comic-Con or something, and Ultros is a character, um, a comedy <laughs> side character from Final Fantasy VI, and Final Fantasy is a you know nothing else about me this whole time is a huge thing in my life. So um, I decided that I was going to make this into an Ultros mask and to make it something I can hang on the wall or at least wear when I'm feeling crazy or at least wear, wear into public now, who knows? So <laughs> I had made teeth for this initially out of polymer clay and it wasn't even like Sculpey 3 or anything. It's the really soft stuff. A. So it's I can show you. I made teeth like this. If it will, I don't know that this works. This is what makeup gurus do. But I made these teeth. And ideally, I would mount them like so. But my thought was if I even breathe in this in the wrong direction and nudge it against anything, polymer clay sucks. <laughs> it is not a strong material in the least. So my goal is actually to get. This is dumb. <laughs> oh, this is dumb. What am I doing? <laughs> the point of this, of what I'm trying to do here, is less about what I'm making and more to just make things because thoughts like that just like creep in all of a sudden why would you care why should anyone care why do I care why do I make things I should go out for a walk or something <laughs> um You'll have to forgive me. This probably isn't going to be a 
watch <laughs> me make things all the time video. It's going to be. But I have a lot of things I need to talk myself through. My hope is that this will actually be... Hmm. Maybe I can overwrite the things that I'm saying to myself. <sighs> yeah. Anyway. So today's experiment is uh, first to uh, prepare this mask. It's got all these plastic, oh, plastic, but these uh, grooves here that I need to get rid of. I'm thinking I might keep this eye section here. I kind of like that. Not the glitter, of course, or maybe glitter later, but I have a friend who has a very strong opinions on glitter. <laughs> but ideally to smooth all of this out, um, I'm going to round out so this is all the way on the top. And it doesn't peek out, uh, it doesn't make these edges on the... <sighs> no, I'm not gonna cut any of this because I'm I'd have to look at myself a lot and then I would never do this. So let's just, I'm going to break out the Dremel, which is, uh, it's not even a good wired version. And uh, change the head on this and uh, let's start uh, drilling this out. Also, don't do as I do. I'm sure that you probably should have a better mask or goggles or ventilation or do this outside. Probably highly advised to not sand things in your bedroom. Uh, yeah, don't watch, don't repeat. Doubling down before on my statement that I don't know what I'm doing, I raise you, uh, absolutely guessing each and every single time I use a Dremel about which bit to use. I'm using this guy, is he gonna work? Uh, probably, but I have a variety of packages and whole bag of bees that my dad gave me at some point so you know if this one doesn't work we're just gonna switch out for another one <laughs> all right let's try it let's uh let's see if it works pop this right here I mean, it's not going to be completely level again that probably I should take the paint off but as long as it's somewhat level I can always go over it with epoxy like you can see here where the mask originally ended because I planned to round this whole part out that I added epoxy so I can absolutely put a layer of epoxy and smooth this out since my ability to sand things into perfection um, leaves a bit to be desired but maybe this is a good time so I'm gonna try this fancy time-lapse nonsense that phones come with and uh, hopefully that turns out. try this dude a plastic easy lock cutting disc this may be the wrong thing to use this is totally the wrong size key um to use but i am always uh making this up as i go which is a terrible terrible idea but you know i still have all my fingers so we're gonna try it <laughs>
right, so we're pretty sanded. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect because I think I kind of want to get like some decent texture on him. Uh, you know, so putting over a layer of epoxy and fixing up this edge. I got a little close to there, so I'll probably add on a little bit here. Um, so it's come to my attention that the angle of the videos thus far has been a little off center. But I've never done this before, so I beg your patience and hopefully, um, you know, a year or years from now, um, I'll be a master. But I am as of yet an absolute and utter novice. I don't even think novice is enough is a strong enough word. But uh let's do we'll see. Can I do better? Let's say I don't know. We'll find out. It's gonna be fun, I think. So it's time for teeth. Teeth time. A whole week later, because that is my current rate of motivation and production, and also the fact that this didn't get here until yesterday. Um, this is the white epoxy, and I'm given to believe that it dries a dirty white. It's not a white white. Now, they do make a super white one that is $25 for a pound, which is not a, a, um, a price per pound I'm willing to pay for right now. So this is four pounds of the white epoxy, and I paid $45 for it, which still makes me a bit because I have spent so much money on art supplies that I still have. And I am surrounded by it in my room at all times, and they mock me for not using them. So the fact that I've bought more when I still have gray epoxy, it's okay. The money's spent. I've opened it. It's mine now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, moody in the future. When my rate of production is a little bit more impressive, I can shell out the $25 and maybe see like what the super white's all about. If it's worth it. If it's not, um, I guess we'll see. So, yeah. Now we need to get some gloves because uh, the one thing that you don't really want to do, and you're supposed to wear gloves, I think, through the entire process of wearing these. So this is going to be another one of those um, do as I say, not as I do things. Because I do mix this with gloves on. But I find that gloves get in the way of me actually modeling stuff. So, yeah. Let's get some gloves. A person who is better at this would have all of their supplies handy. I don't. I am using, I like this uh, size of these teeth, the ones that I had made out of polymer clay. I like the idea of these. So I feel like I'm going to make them pretty long and then in the future, whenever I get this sorted out, because I do want them kind of at weird sort of angles, cockeyed like this, that I can just shave them down to however I want or, you know, add more to it before I, I weather them like so. But... This is about the size that I want, so I figure I'll make it about, you know, this much longer. You know, to... I'm gonna stop talking. I'm just gonna stop talking. Oh, yeah. I was having a discussion with my mom today that uh, my job requires me to be in a mask all the time. And you may have gotten this idea from me already. I'm a little... Uh, anxious. When I'm really anxious, I touch my face all the time. So at work, I actually put my mask on before I leave for work. And I don't take it off until I get home. So I probably wear a mask. I mean, I don't even stop for water or anything. So I probably wear a mask about, ooh, 48 hours a week, maybe. Um, so right now I'm wearing a mask too. Because uh, I don't want to show my face on camera because uh, reasons uh, <laughs> that I actually feel more at home in a mask and that it feels weird sometimes to not be in one. The one thing I really love about new epoxy is it's so smooth. Once epoxy starts to get a little bit old, um, it does start to become quite um, aggravating to use because I am really blind. <laughs> I try not to mix the lids for my bottoms. I usually try to do this in paint so that it's more obvious. I really have to put like a piece of like duct tape or something that's a completely different color because I can't tell. 
Usually whenever I've written the the, the canister was always turned a certain way that I can't. There's the lid. Can you tell I'm nervous? I'm very nervous. For no reason. I'm literally just talking to myself. Hey, uh, my one friend, my like my best friend, says uh ay yeah, Jackie all the time. And now I say it. So I always eyeball this stuff. I don't know if you're supposed to like weigh or measure it, but I've always eyeballed it and I have never had that much of a problem with it. Usually try to roll it into like a similar, maybe a little bit more. And I'm gonna say that's pretty good. And now it comes for the twisting part. So usually like I roll it thin, whatever gets the job done, I guess. I do think I have to put this down a little bit here. Please bear with me because I don't know what I'm doing. I should take a picture of something else to show you exactly how I'm trying to rig this up. So like I was saying, it's not, it's not ideal. No, it is not a professional setup by any means. However, um, I'm not so great at spending money. Okay, it took me a lot. This is sitting in my Amazon cart for like two months, okay? So, uh, I'm bad at spending money. So I don't want to invest in something without knowing I'm actually going to do the thing at this point. Um, so if I get this video done, if I actually post it, then, then maybe I'll get a big boy camera stand. It usually takes, I think, what, 24 to 48 hours to fully cure. Um, I gotta portion this out for some teeth. So I'm going to say. And any tools you use with epoxy, you're gonna wanna clean before too long, completely. Because once it dries on there, like I have a, if I can find it, this blade, <laughs> which I used on some epoxy and I've managed to get some of it off, but I have to like sand it down. Really annoying. So we're just gonna take a couple guesses here as far as teeth go. And just a rough idea, you can always add more, take it back. Epoxy remains pliable for a really long period of time. And in fact, you can let it sit. Um, you can even let it sit for, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minutes and let it harden up a little bit more. It's very sticky at this stage. So I can make four teeth and see how, round about how that goes. I feel like trying to do any more and the way I've always noticed is that I've either I've either mixed up just enough of uh, just <laughs> just a little less epoxy than I need or way too much. So I usually have a variety of small projects on the side that I slowly build up epoxy on. Let me see if I can reach one and show you. Like I started this other mask too that I am going to cover in eyeballs. So anytime I'm left with excess epoxy, if it's enough, then I pop it on here and I make some eyeballs. Aha. So, this is probably way too much for teeth, but you know what? I need it a little bit longer. So, another tool is to, uh, so when you smooth, you can smooth epoxy fairly well, it gets very sticky. You can tell my hands are pretty sticky, um, is water. Water is excellent. I admire this paint palette that I bought <laughs> that I never clean and a repurposed shampoo bottle that I use for water on command because I usually sit down to do stuff and I never have water on me. All right, so I'm gonna take the gloves off. A good thing is that if you are going to um, use this stuff barehanded, uh, clean your hands really well afterwards. Try not to touch your face, like, because the things that the resin, I feel like the interaction, um, you can get like an allergic reaction to it. And I have in the past from touching my own eyes with it. So um, if you have glasses, wear them. Or, I don't know, wear fake glasses. 
or goggles or something. Anything that's going to help deter you, if you, like me, will, like, touch your eyes. So, again, we're kind of going for this kind of shape now. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to get in there with a Dremel. I'm actually not going to go too crazy about making lines or anything. I'm just going to go for the base shape. Kind of like this. I did scratch away some of this, if you can see. But just a general curved shape I think I'm going to go for. And it is very, very pliable right now. So I may have to just kind of coarsely shape it for right now until it sets up a bit more. You know, this stuff is a lot, well, I don't know. Maybe at this point, my, my other stuff is a bit older. So when it does age a little bit more, um, even if you're really good about keeping a really good uh, tight seal on it, it does become like tougher. It's not as smooth, um, especially if you start to, like I, um, I had this older stuff before I even got the, the gray one I have now. The very first time I had epoxy, I think I had the same container for like a year <laughs> and toward the end of the year, it was, um, it was gross. I feel like, uh, some of the activators started separating and it was oily and they dry. It was very strange. So yeah. Ideally, I just kind of want, I want it to have a nice curve to it. All right, so this is where we speed up because I redid all of them. I, in my attempts to shape them, I was making them too tapered at the edge and not leaving enough to like Dremel off later to shape it the way I want to. So I took each tooth, I re-rolled it back into a ball and rolled it out into a cone shape and just curved it kind of like what I did before but without really working the ends of it. It bears mentioning that earlier this day I completely rearranged my room and I put my work table underneath my bedroom window which I have to look at when I walk into my room. My hope is that instead of it being in another corner of my room that by seeing it consistently constantly in an unavoidable way I will be more inclined to work instead of waiting another seven days. Um, my hope is to, uh, by the next video, to have made the remaining teeth and then show you what I plan to do about dremeling them and how I'm going to get that weathering down. Uh, yeah. Finding the motivation has been really difficult. Like making those four teeth right there. Like it cost something. It's stupid because it hasn't. It's like the most minimal effort. I haven't even reshaped them yet, but some days are just some days are just harder than others, you know? I don't know.